When I think of racing, I think of human precision, mechanical excellence, and the thrill of going really fast. But what if the human is taken out of the equation and AI becomes the driving force behind the experience? Is technology alone enough to fuel the same passion for the sport? I'm Arjun Dutt, and this is I Am AI. So RoboRace is the world's first autonomous racing competition. Fundamentally, RoboRace is providing a platform for development of AI drivers. So we do the hardware, we do all of the mechanical design, we then work with partners like NVIDIA on the vehicle intelligence platform, we surface data, we surface that into AI drivers, and that's what the teams compete at, is writing the software that consumes the data, see, think, act. The first thing we have to achieve is providing vehicles to the teams. So we have three of the development vehicles and we have three of the robocars that are running. To validate that the AI training is correct, RoboRace created DevBot, a race car with a seat for a human to act as a monitor. Once they feel confident in the AI's abilities, the human can come out and the AI driver is set out on the track as the sole control. On top of the vehicle, we provide the self-driving platform and lower level software so the teams can not focus on low-level stuff. They can focus only on intelligent part. They can think how to process the data in a more efficient way and how to compete with other uh, players at the track. So when we put DevBot out on the track, it's got a whole load of sensors that are related to the powertrain and the, the vehicle dynamics. And all of that is surfaced up into the AI driving layer. Without a brain, you become a scarecrow. I think that's probably the best reference. And NVIDIA is our brain that's inside these cars that turn effectively a, a chassis that can't move into something that can actually automate itself. That's what's actually consuming all of the data and then being able to use machine learning to process the data and make decisions. In order to make informed driving decisions, it's important to have a more complete understanding of the world around the car. The RoboCar has a wealth of sensors it uses to gather information about its location and environment. To improve the data collected by these sensors, the racing team can use a technique called sensor fusion. Fusing the data from multiple sensors helps to increase confidence in the combined measurements. LiDAR, for example, doesn't work well in dense fog, while radar still does. When both LiDAR and radar sensors are able to detect an object, the multiple measurements will more accurately predict the object's distance. In this way, sensor fusion provides more complete and accurate information to influence the decisions of the AI driver. There's a long way to go before AI can be at a level of a human driver. A human driver, even if they're 17, has a lot of background knowledge about environments, how to navigate environments and what to expect. And they bring that with them. If they've been go-kart racing since they were four years old, they bring all of that with them as well. So you're talking about, you know, 15 years worth of experience is what you're bringing to the track. It sounds like one of the most important uses of AI is building those intuitive reflexes that humans have. But self-driving cars and trucks are already making headway here. So how are these robotic race cars different? The biggest challenge is the delays and latencies, because once you go from the speeds like 100 kph, it is fine. 200 kph to 300 kph, it is more or less fine. But once you go beyond 300 kph, every millisecond is really important. So once we go to higher speeds, we need to make sure all our algorithms, all, all the sensors can do the things super fast and perform fast enough to make it possible to drive at, at, at such speeds. If they're providing an identical platform to compete on, what's this competition really about? What will the teams add to make their AI driver original and the winner of the race? The teams that enter, that write the driving software, might bias one data set compared to another. So what we focus on is situations and creating situations that test perception, decision-making, reasoning, judgment to the limit. So you're looking at cognitive power, not mechanical power. When you watch the car perform and you see the actions that it takes, you, you read the decisions that it makes, you see personality. So how are the fans reacting to this? They're used to supporting the person that's behind the wheel, not the technology. We completely split the public. So you have part of the public that want to see a human involved. 
They want to see humans racing. Other parts of the public want to see technology and they want to see motorsport being used to develop technology that will keep them safe on the roads in the future. And that's really what Rover Race is about, is making sure we can take technology from this environment, transfer it to the roads and make the roads safer. Part of that focus is saying, well, what situations are you training on? Because if you're just racing on a racetrack, how's that relevant to me when I'm on the freeway, when I'm in the city, when I'm on an urban road or a rural road or a mountain road? Well, they're the environments that we're going to be racing in. They're the situations that we're going to be creating so that when the public watch, they see things that are relevant to their real life driving experience and they know that that software is capable of keeping them safe in those conditions.